What's up guys, some NFL teams have had far more success than others. There have only been a few dynasties in the Super Bowl era, and about one third of NFL teams would probably fall into the category of having sad histories. But every NFL club, good or bad, has had a handful of game-changing stars and franchise icons throughout their history. If there were to be a Mount Rushmore for every NFL club, what would it look like? That's what we're here for. So let's get into it. Make sure to subscribe to TBS because we post videos all the time. New videos all the time. Arizona Cardinals, Larry Fitzgerald, Kurt Warner, Jackie Smith, Aeneas Williams. Kurt Warner and Larry Fitzgerald together brought this organization as close as it has ever come to a Super Bowl, while Aeneas Williams is still considered by many to be the most underrated defensive back ever. As for Jackie Smith, many remember him from his Super Bowl drop, but he was still credited as being the first true great NFL tight end. Atlanta Falcons, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Michael Vick, Deion Sanders. Matty Ice and Julio will go down as one of the greatest QB wide receiver combos of all time. Time. The duo led Atlanta to a pair of NFC Championship games, plus a trip to Super Bowl 51. Vic's tenure in Atlanta ended on an ugly note, but he's still the greatest dual-threat QB of all time. And he saved a franchise that was in disarray for a long period. And even though Primetime became public enemy number one after signing with the rival San Francisco 49ers, there's no denying he's the greatest defensive player in their history. Baltimore Ravens, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Terrell Suggs, Jonathan Ogden. Lewis Reed Suggs may be the most dominant defensive trio in NFL history. Each player made it to numerous Pro Bowls. They all won the Defensive Player of the Year award, and Lewis did twice. Oh, and the three men led the Ravens to a Super Bowl 47 championship. As for Ogden, he earned 11 Pro Bowl selections and helped the Ravens win Super Bowl 35. The Hall of Famer was also named to the 2000s All-Decade team. Buffalo Bills, Jim Kelly, Andre Reed, Thurman Thomas, Bruce Smith. The dynasty that never was. Kelly, Reed, and Thomas were virtually unstoppable as key components of Buffalo's no-huddle offense. While those guys took most of the credit, Smith was completely dominating on the defensive side of the ball, and holds the record for most career sacks with 200. All four men helped the Bills reach four straight Super Bowls in the 90s. All four men are in Canton. This is one star-studded Mount Rushmore. Carolina Panthers, Cam Newton, Steve Smith Sr., Luke Keekley, Julius Peppers. They may be a young franchise, but the Panthers sure have quite the Mount Rushmore to brag about. Newton won the 2015 MVP award. He and Keekley have transformed this franchise into an annual playoff contender. Oh, and Smith and Peppers need to sit back patiently for their calls to the hall. Smith absolutely shredded defenses with his game-changing speed and world-class hands, while Peppers' 159.5 sacks place him fourth all-time. Chicago Bears, George Hallis, Walter Payton, Dick Buckus, Bronco Nagurski. There's no way the Bears endure such a rich history without Hallis. The founder and owner of the Bears also spent 40 years as their head coach. The team won eight NFL championships under Hallis. Many still call Walter Walter Payton the greatest running back of all time. And why not? His 16,726 yards ranks second all time, only behind Emmitt Smith. Buckus is widely regarded as the greatest linebacker ever. His two Defensive Player of the Year awards seem to support his case. And then there's Bronco Nagurski, who won three NFL championships with the Bears and is enshrined in the Hall of Fame. Cincinnati Bengals, Anthony Munoz, Andy Dalton, AJ Green, Geno Atkins. Were there any offensive linemen as dominant as Munoz? 11 Pro Bowl selections, nine first team all pro selections and a spot on the 80s all decade team? The answer is probably not. The Bengals have struggled in recent years, but the QB wide receiver combo of Dalton and Green, plus the rise of pass rushing stud Geno Atkins, led this team to five straight playoff seasons from 2011 to 15. Green and Atkins are building up good cases to join Munoz in the Hall of Fame one day. Cleveland Browns, Paul Brown, Jim Brown, Otto Graham, Ozzie Newsom. No way of building a Cleveland Mountain Rushmore without Paul Brown. He was co-founder of the club and he was the organization first head coach. People in this generation can't discuss the greatest QB ever without mentioning Otto Graham. He was simply the best of his era. Graham led Cleveland to three NFL championships alongside Coach Brown. Jim Brown is probably the greatest running back in NFL history. He led the league in rushing eight times and won three AP NFL MVP awards. Before he became a Super Bowl winning executive with the Baltimore Ravens, Ozzie Newsom was a superstar tight end for the Cleveland Browns. The three-time Pro Bowler is also in the Hall of Fame. Dallas Cowboys, Tom Landry, Roger Staubach, Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith. Coming up with the Cowboys' Mount Rushmore was no easy task, but there's no way of excluding iconic head coach Tom Landry, who coached the team from 1960 to 1988. Later, he and quarterback Roger Staubach led Dallas to two Super Bowls. Aikman and Emmett Smith formed two-thirds of the triplets a 
alongside wide receiver Michael Irvin. The trio led Dallas to three Super Bowls in the 90s. That's one impressive Mount Rushmore. Denver Broncos, Pat Bolin, John Elway, Champ Bailey, Terrell Davis. Bolin became owner of the Denver Broncos in 1994, and he stayed there until his death in 2019. As owner of the Broncos for 35 years, Bolin compiled a remarkable 335-225-1 record, and the club only had seven losing seasons. John Elway, the greatest Bronco ever, and fellow Hall of Famer Terrell Davis, guided the club to Super Bowl 32 and 33 championships. As an executive, Elway built the Broncos Super Bowl 50 championship team as well. As for Bailey, the Hall of Fame cornerback earned 12 Pro Bowl selections, and he racked up 52 career interceptions and helped the Broncos reach Super Bowl 48. Detroit Lions, Bobby Lane, Dick Knight Train Lane, Barry Sanders, Joe Schmidt. Sorry to leave Calvin Johnson out, but Bobby Lane was one of the few elite quarterbacks in his era. He guided the Lions to NFL championships in 1952, 53, and 57. Pro Bowl linebacker Joe Schmidt was part of the latter two titles. Night Train Lane played with the Lions from 1960 to 65. Some consider him to be the greatest cornerback ever. And then there's Barry Sanders, one of the flashiest offensive playmakers ever. He led the league in rushing four times and took home two Offensive Player of the Year awards. Green Bay Packers, Don Hudson, Vince Lombardi, Bart Starr, Aaron Rodgers. The Packers history is so rich with greatness that we couldn't even include 11-time Pro Bowler and three-time MVP quarterback Brett Favre. But how could we not include the likes of Starr, Hudson, Rodgers, and Lombardi? Starr led the team to five NFL championships and two Super Bowl titles. Hudson won two MVP awards and revolutionized the wide receiver position. Rodgers also won two regular season MVPs and a Super Bowl MVP award. And they named the damn NFL championship trophy after Vince Lombardi. Which of these guys would you have left off for far? Houston Texans, J.J. Watt, Andre Johnson, DeAndre Hopkins, Dwayne Brown. The youngest NFL franchise has only been around since 2002, but they already have one guy headed to the Hall of Fame in wide receiver Andre Johnson. Some guy named DeAndre Hopkins is now making his case as the best wide receiver in the NFL. Offensive tackle Dwayne Brown earned a trio of Pro Bowl selections while in Houston, paving the way for the likes of Arian Foster and Lamar Miller. And then there's the greatest Texan of all time, J.J. Watt, the ultimate sack machine who's won three Defensive Player of the Year awards. Any question about his spot on here? No? Good. Indianapolis Colts, Johnny Unitas, Raymond Berry, Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison. So Unitas was the most dominant quarterback of his era. Raymond Berry was arguably the best wide receiver of his era. Peyton Manning won four MVP awards with the Colts and he led them to a Super Bowl 41 championship. Manning and Marvin Harrison formed the greatest QB wide receiver combo ever. The latter led the league in receiving twice and earned eight Pro Bowl selections. If not for Jerry Rice and Randy Moss, you could argue that he's the best wide receiver ever. Jacksonville Jaguars, Fred Taylor, Maurice Jones-Drew, Jimmy Smith, Tony Baselli. This young franchise hasn't been able to develop any true franchise icons or legends, but they're getting close. Pro Bowl running back Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones drew locked down spots on here. They're among the game's best during their respective prime years. After winning two Super Bowls with the Cowboys, Jimmy Smith joined the Jaguars in 1995. He earned five Pro Bowl selections and owns most of the franchise receiving records. And finally, five-time Pro Bowl offensive tackle Tony Baselli rounds out the Jaguars Mount Rushmore. For those who don't know, this guy was pretty good. Kansas City Chiefs. Tony Gonzalez, Will Shields, Len Dawson, Derek Thomas. If not Rob Gronkowski, Tony Gonzalez is the greatest tight end of all time. He's also arguably the greatest chief ever. Dawson, one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the AFL before it merged with the NFL, led the Chiefs to their first Super Bowl title in franchise history. Hall of Fame guard Will Shields earned 12 Pro Bowl selections in his career. And even though his life was tragically cut short, Derek Thomas had a near flawless resume. He's an easy choice here. Los Angeles Chargers, Phillip Rivers, Dan Fouts, Junior Seau, Ladanian Tomlinson. Rivers is one of the most prolific passers of all time. The Hall of Fame awaits in his first year of eligibility. Fouts led the NFL in passing yards four times and is enshrined in Canton. And our boy Junior was a complete game changer on defense. The 12 time Pro Bowl linebacker was the 1992 Defensive Player of the Year and earned eight first team All Pro selections. As for Tomlinson, say hello to the 2006 league MVP and two time rushing leader. Remember when he set a record with 31 TDs from scrimmage in 2006? Los Angeles Rams. Merlin Olsen, Jack Youngblood, Marshall Falk, Deacon Jones. They may not have the winning tradition of other historic teams like the Packers, Cowboys, and Steelers, but the Rams are loaded with Hall of Famers. This was another very difficult Mount Rushmore for us to select. Merlin Olsen and Deacon Jones were two elite pass rushers and perennial Pro Bowlers. Both are in the Hall of Fame, and Jones even won a pair of Defensive Player of the Year awards. Youngblood, also a stud defensive end, won two NFC Defensive Player of the Year awards. He too is in Canton. And finally, Marshall 
Marshall Falk was among the game's most dominant offensive players in his era. He and Kurt Warner led the Rams' greatest show on turf offense to a Super Bowl 34 title. Unfortunately, we had to leave the latter off the Rams' Mount Rushmore. Miami Dolphins Don Shula, Dan Marino, Jason Taylor, Larry Sanka. Shula led the 72 Dolphins to a perfect season, and he won two Super Bowls as head coach of the Fins. Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl, but you can argue that he's the greatest pocket passer ever. Dan the Man was the 1984 MVP and led the league in passing yards five times. Taylor was one of the league's most feared pass rushers. The 2006 Defensive Player of the Year racked up 139.5 sacks and 40 forced fumbles in his career. Yeah, he's in Canton. Rounding up the Finns' Mount Rushmore is Larry Sanka. The Hall of Fame fullback was part of two Super Bowl teams in Miami. Minnesota Vikings, Bud Grant, Fran Tarkenton, Alan Page, Randy Moss. After spending a decade as head coach of the CFL's Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Bud Grant took over as head coach of the Vikings in 1967. Two years later, he led the club to an NFL championship. He also oversaw the development of the Purple People Eaters defense, led by the 1971 league MVP and two-time defensive player of the year, Alan Page. That 70s Vikings juggernaut also included nine-time Pro Bowler and 1975 MVP quarterback Fran Tarkenton. He guided the club to three Super Bowl appearances in the 90s, but they lost them all. Randy Moss is the greatest receiver ever after Jerry Rice. So yeah, we shouldn't have to explain why he's on here. New England Patriots. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, Robert Kraft, Rob Gronkowski. The Patriots were one of the NFL's saddest teams for nearly 40 years. Then Robert Kraft bought the team. Then Bill Belichick became head coach. Then Tom Brady became the starter. Then the Patriots won the Super Bowl three times. Then they got Rob Gronkowski and won three more Super Bowls. Was there really any doubt as to who would be on the Patriots Mount Rushmore? No, I don't think so. New Orleans Saints. Drew Brees, Sean Payton, Ricky Jackson, Archie Manning. Brees and Payton arrived together in New Orleans for the 2006 season. They took the Saints to the NFC title game that year. Three seasons later, the pair led the Saints to their first ever Super Bowl before Payton and Brees turned the Saints into a juggernaut. Hall of Fame linebacker Ricky Jackson was leading by example on the New Orleans defense. And rounding out the Saints Mount Rushmore is Archie Manning, proud father of Payton and Eli. And Cooper. Archie earned two Pro Bowl selections and is in the Saints Hall of Fame. New York Giants. Lawrence Taylor, Rosie Brown, Michael Strahan, Eli Manning. So Taylor is only the greatest defensive player of all time. There's no questioning his spot here. Offensive tackle Rosie Brown more than deserved his spot on this list. He played his entire career with the G-Men, earning nine Pro Bowl selections and winning the 1956 NFL Championship. He wasn't as dominant as LT, but Strahan was one of the most feared pass rushers ever. He led the league in sacks twice, won the 2001 Defensive Player of the Year award, and helped the Giants upset the undefeated New England Patriots in Super Bowl 40. Even though he's been so inconsistent throughout his career, Eli is likely headed to the Hall. That's what a pair of Super Bowl rings and big game MVP awards will do for you. New York Jets. Joe Namath, Curtis Martin, Darrell Rivas, Don Maynard. Broadway Joe led the Jets to their only Super Bowl championship back in 1969. His favorite target was another Hall of Famer and AFL star in Don Maynard. Martin, one of the most consistently dominant running backs ever, sits fifth all time in rushing yards. And then there's Darrell Rivas, unquestionably the best cornerback of his era. Rivas Island locked down the opposition's top wide receiver for a decade. He's a surefire Hall of Famer, no question about that. Oakland Raiders, Al Davis, John Madden, Ken Stabler, Fred Boletnikoff. Davis started out as head coach of the Raiders in 1963, before moving to part owner GM in 1966 and principal owner in 1972. In 1969, Davis hired John Madden to become head coach of the Raiders. The two men built the Raiders franchise into a juggernaut, led by quarterback Ken Stabler and wide receiver Fred Boletnikoff. All four men of the Raiders, Mount Rushmore, were part of Super Bowl championship teams, and all four of them are in the Hall of Fame. Philadelphia Eagles, Chuck Bednarik, Reggie White, Brian Dawkins, Jason Peters. Bednarik and White were two of the absolute most dominant game-changing players ever. They completely revolutionized their respective positions. Dawkins, the hard-hitting safety, earned his spot in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2018. That's what nine Pro Bowl selections will do for you. As for Peters, he'll soon join these three men in the Hall. The stud offensive tackle earned his ninth Pro Bowl selection in 2016 and helped the Eagles win Super Bowl 52. Pittsburgh Steelers, Art Rooney, Terry Bradshaw, Joe Green, Chuck Knoll. The Pittsburgh Steelers were probably the toughest Mount Rushmore of them all. There were so many options. We even had to leave off Franco Harris and Jack Lambert. But Art Rooney was an easy choice. He set the golden standard for how to run a model organization. And it was Rooney who hired Chuck Knoll as head coach in 1969. It was Knoll who built the steel curtain defense of the 70s. It was Knoll who turned Terry Bradshaw into a legendary quarterback.
quarterback. It was these four men who helped Pittsburgh win four Super Bowls in the 70s. But really, there are around 10 to 15 Steelers who have made a case for a spot on the team's Mount Rushmore. San Francisco 49ers, Bill Walsh, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Ronnie Lott. We hated having to exclude Steve Young from this list, but it just goes to show how many great people have been part of the 49ers organization. Walsh arrived as head coach of the 49ers in 1979, the same year the team drafted Montana in the third round. These two men led the 49ers to a trio of Super Bowl championships in the 80s, and Montana would lead San Fran to a fourth. Oh, and Rice is the best wide receiver of all time. He leads every major receiving record. He was part of three Super Bowl championship teams in San Fran. And let's not forget, Ronnie Lott might be the greatest defensive back of all time. He won four Super Bowls in San Fran. And yeah, all four are in the hall. Duh. Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson, Steve Largent, Cortez Kennedy, Richard Sherman. Russ seems to only be getting better each year. He was instrumental in helping the Seahawks crush the Denver Broncos in Super Bowl 48. So was Pro Bowl corner Richard Sherman, the leader of Seattle's Legion of Boom. Largent, among the most dominant wide receivers ever seen, led the NFL in receiving twice. As for Kennedy, he spent his entire career with the Seahawks from 1990 to 2000. He had 58 career sacks and won the 1992 Defensive Player of the Year award. Both he and Largent are enshrined in Canton. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Derek Brooks, Warren Sapp, Rondé Barber, Leroy Selman. Brooks, Sapp, and Barber were the anchors of John Gruden's legendary 2002 defense in Tampa. You know, the unit that only allowed 12.3 points per game. These three guided the Bucks to their only Super Bowl championship in franchise history back in the 2002 season. As for Selman, he was one of the few bright spots on a miserable Bucks team in the 70s and 80s. Named to the 80s all-decade team, Selman also earned six Pro Bowl selections. Tennessee Titans, Bruce Matthews, Earl Campbell, Warren Moon, Alvin Bethay. Part of the legendary Matthews football family, Bruce carved out quite a career for himself as one of the all-time great offensive linemen. The 14-time Pro Bowler and Hall of Famer played every position on the offensive line. Matthews certainly made life easier for quarterback Warren Moon, who made the successful transition from the CFL to the NFL. Campbell won three Offensive Player of the Year awards and led the NFL in rushing three times. Like the other three men on this Mount Rushmore, Bethay earned himself a spot in the Hall of Fame thanks to his eight Pro Bowl selections. Washington Redskins, Sammy Baugh, Daryl Green, John Riggins, Sonny Jurgensen. This was another tough one. The Redskins had so many incredible players throughout their first 60 years of existence. It was impossible to exclude Sammy Baugh, arguably the greatest quarterback of the 30s and 40s. He led the Redskins to the 1937 and 42 NFL Championship while consistently leading the league in every major QB category. Oh, and he was a dominant safety. And he played punter too. Jurgensen joined the Redskins in 1964 and wrapped up his Hall of Fame career in the nation's capital. He is second all time in franchise passing yards and touchdown passes. Green was the anchor of Joe Gibbs defense and led the team to two Super Bowl championships. And Riggins, one of the most prolific running backs of his era, led the Redskins to a Super Bowl 17 championship. Obviously, all four of these guys are in Canton. Who would you put on your favorite NFL team's Mount Rushmore? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media. We post great content all the time. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post videos all the time as well. And my Instagram because I post photos. And then same thing for TPS right here. Follow. Go check it out. Go give it a look. See what you think. Make sure to like this video if you liked it because we really appreciate it. It helps us out. Make sure to subscribe to TPS because we post videos all the time. New videos all the time. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I am Jason Biondo. And you know what? Well, you know what? Money. Money.